be down at the beach with... Ha! Huh? Ren? Ren, listen. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvit and today I'm going to play some more 14 days with you. Why? Because there's a day two update, that's why we could finally actually go on that date with Ren. I'm just going to kind of show everything that's in day two, but if you'd like to see everything that happened in day one, hopefully editor me will put a link to those videos. Can I trust you to remember that, editor me? Waking up to the sounds of birds chirping outside and the sunlight filtering through my blinds, I groggily rub my eyes before absent-mindedly staring at the ceiling for a few moments. Man, it sure is weird to not have a pink-haired man in my bed with me. The night can end that way sometimes. A lot had occurred last night, and I still needed to process most of it. But the main thing that plagued my mind was the date I had planned today with Ren, the guy I had met at the library yesterday. Reaching over my nightstand to grab my phone, I casually checked the time, only to realize I still had a few more hours to kill. Not only that, but I also apparently received a text message from Moth at some point last night. At a glance, it appeared as though they were just ranting about the newest update for Always With You, again. Though I hadn't read the latest chapter yet to know all of the details. Nevertheless, I read through their wall of text and memes, an avid curiosity, and even sent back a few of my own. Before I knew it, hours seemed to pass by in a blur. Uh-oh. Glancing back at the time on my phone once more, I noticed that it went from being eight o'clock to half past ten. Ooh, half past ten? My date with Ren was supposed to be in half an hour. I quickly let Moth know that I had to dip from the conversation before throwing my phone into the mattress and sprinting towards the bathroom. <laughs> but just as I grab a fresh towel and a change of clothes from my wardrobe, my phone buzzes once more. Assuming it was yet another text from Moth, I pick it up and put in my passcode, but what awaited me was a message from none other than Ren. Hi, hi, good morning, Angel. I hope I didn't wake you up. It's so cute when he misspells words like that. Wake. <laughs> I love this man. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to confirm whether or not you were still on for our date today. Because we can meet up at the beach walk if you are. It's not far from this new cafe I want to check out. Ren's messages brought a smile to my face, for some reason. And I assumed it was because he just seemed as enthusiastic as I was for today. He's like a little puppy. I send back my own affirmative text alongside a smiling Haruko sticker before going back to my bathroom and getting ready for the day. In the end, I did end up meeting Ren halfway via the boardwalk, and we decided to walk to this recently opened cafe together for lunch. It wasn't far from my apartment anyway, and I figured I could do with a bit of exercise. Turning to my side, I notice how the pink-haired man tries to not so subtly sneak side glances towards me. The arm at his side practically itches to reach out, and, if I knew any better, I would assume he'd wanted to hold my hand. <gasps> Illegal hand-holding? But instead, he simply tucks his hands into his pockets and shoots me yet another soft smile. The weather's really nice today, huh? Back to small talk, it seems. Aww, do you know- do you not know how to person, Ren? Sure is. If I had known it'd be this nice and sunny, I would have suggested spending the day at the beach instead. Y yeah Yeah, we could go for a swim, or maybe even check out the rock pools. Rock pools? It's been a while since I've been there. What is a rock pool? Editor edit me, what, what is this rock pool and why haven't I gone to one? Uh, oh, that does sound fun. Oh hey! Espoir! At the sound of my name being called, I turn on my heels, only to find Leon running up to me with a sports bag full of what I assume to be his volleyball gear. And Ren's face instantly turns sour. Friend, friend, you're, you're, you're gonna have to get out of here for your safety. For your safety, get out of this game quick, run! hey -o, sunfish. It's good to see you out and about this early. I'm gonna give him a little accent, cause why not? I was just on my way to the beach to meet up with Jaehyun and Teo. 
Want to tag along? And hey, it's Ron, right? Nice to meet you again, buddy. Oh, you're gonna die, friend. You're gonna die. I'm sorry. Get out of this game. Oh, it's Ren, actually. Sunfish. Huh? Oh, yeah. Sunfish is a cheesy nickname Leon gave me when we were kids. I don't really get it either, to be honest. So, Sunfish and Ren, was it? Sorry about that, bud. I'm not too good with names. Faces, too, sometimes. But hey, it's good to see you both again. Doing anything exciting today? If not, you can tag along with me and... Angelfish and I were about to go on a date, actually. A Angelfish? Oh, A date? I don't miss the way Ren suddenly pulls my arm closer to his side, nor the way he clings on to me as though I'd suddenly disappear. You're going on dates again, doll? Good for you. I'm glad to see that you're coming out of your shell again. Take good care of her for me, won't you, bud? What do you think I've been doing ever since you moved away? <gasps> Ren, are you... Are you dropping lore? You dropping lore, Ren? What do you mean by that? Like me, Leon barely seems to notice Ren's mumbling as he rests an arm over my shoulder and starts tugging me in the direction of the beach. Ren, on the other hand, still latches onto my arm, but doesn't seem to move. I can't believe my little sunfish is out there in the dating scene again. I feel like a proud father. Oh, please. We're basically the same age. I feel like a proud, adoptive father. <laughs> Leon pretends to wipe a tear away from his eyes as he leans further into my shoulder, and it was only then that I noticed Ren wasn't following us. Ren? Turning around, I reach out to grab his hand instead to tug him along. He immediately seems to perk up at the action and entwines his fingers with mine before falling into step. All right. As fun as it is to catch up with my proud, adoptive father, who's the same age as me, which makes things kind of weird, Ren and I do need to get going. Oh yeah, of course. I didn't mean to take up so much of your time. He unhooks his arm from around my shoulder and inclines his head towards the beach one more time. But my offer still stands. If you want to catch up some more, I'll be down at the beach with... Ren? Ren. Listen. Ren, listen. 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 Ren. Ren, he's got a snake tattoo. Ren, he's got green... He's got green and black hair. Come on, Ren. C look. Look at him. Look at him. I... Sorry, I'm sorry. You're far too handsome. You're gonna have to get out of this game quickly. Some bad things might happen to you. <laughs> Oi. Speak of the devil. Much like Jay, Teo Theodore? Theodore? That's such a cool name. Is it Theodore or Theodore? I think it's Theodore. Cause I don't know nothing. Theodore was another friend I made in university, but if I was being honest here, I don't think he was actually enrolled in anything. Was he a bum? Were you a buff bum just hanging around? He just showed up every so often to keep his attendance rate up and to antagonize some of the students and staff. As if reading my mind, Teo practically runs into Ren with the sole purpose of sending him tumbling into the metal railing behind him. Oh no! Excuse me, brah. You're excused. But luckily, Ren manages to catch his footing at the last second, sending Teo an annoyed scowl of his own. Oh, shoot. Sorry about that. I'm not sure how I miss such a brightly colored children's mascot. Well, first of all, that insult could have used some work. Second of all, the pain and humiliation I feel daily are immense. For someone like you to cut someone like me deeper, well, <laughs> you must have problems yourself, buddy, so I feel bad for you. And how fucking dare you say that to me? I'm gonna make you regret those goddamn words! All right, there's no need for that here. Despite Leon's tone, Teo barely pays the shorter male any mind, seemingly far more interested in Ren instead. Now hold on a second. Do you see him as a rival, or are you going to try to take him away from me? Actually, that would be hilarious in one of these games if, if a love interest actually was interested in 
your love interest and the other person had get the Yandere to not be in love with you. Kara! Let me guess, you're dressed up as Benny the Buttercup. My four-year-old cousin would love you. Oi, knock it off, mate. What's your problem? Yeah, what, 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 what? You come here with all this animosity, with all this violence. Can't we all be friends? Dunno. What's yours? I could practically feel the tension between the two grow, so I decided to step in. Um, maybe you should introduce each other first before you try glaring each other to death. Teo, this is Ren. He's my, well, I'm her boyfriend. Very few things come out of a Yandere saying that statement. Well, that was certainly one way to put it, especially without discussing it with me beforehand or asking for my input. At his words, I shoot Ren a confused glance. But the determined look on his face had me biting back my words. Um, okay then. Anyways, this is Teo. He's- Oh no, don't make me choose. He's my ex-boyfriend. Ahaha! <laughs> Yeah, I don't like to date people outside of my tax bracket. I don't know what you mean by that. Was that an insult? Are you insulting me, sir? And don't get it twisted, doll. We were never exclusive. I never even brought up the concept of dating when I was with you. Offended? But I did. I kind of bitingly said he was my ex-boyfriend. Oh, that explains why you were fine with cheating on me. Wait, what? I thought you guys were just friends. What a butthole. Look, it's not cheating if I was never your boyfriend. Okay, Tail? I take back what I said. I'm taking off these earrings that I'm not wearing. And, uh, I, I got some hands all warm and ready for you. I will punch you in your six-pack, sir. Oh, right, why don't we change the subject? You weren't my boyfriend? Then why would you ask me to not see other people? You're p you're losing points, Teo. You're losing points fast. <laughs> you started at a perfect score, and now it's going down. <laughs> you think I'd want to share you with others and let them have what's mine? Ren? You can kill him. You have my permission. Before I can step forward and knock some sense into that idiot, Ren seems to beat me to it. He grabs the other male by the collar of his shirt, but Teo only looks on with a lazy smirk. What's your problem? Okay, enough. Look, why don't we just drop the issue? You really need to stop trying to pick fights with everyone, mate. Oh, don't get your panties in a twist. I seriously doubt Buttercup's capable of harming a fly. Should we tell him? Let alone able to throw a decent punch. Ren, punch him. Punch him. Show him the hands. Get him. Ren, get him! You can drop the nickname. Nah. But I think Dollface over here should drop you instead. How dare you call me Dollface? Only Underfell Sands is allowed to call me Dollface. Besides, the nickname is kinda cute. Matches your style pretty well, don't you think? Buttercup? If anyone looks like Buttercup, it's you, sir. From 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 Powerpuff Girls. I could see Ren's hand clinch into a fist as he advances towards Teo, but thankfully Leon steps in once more. Seriously, why don't we all cool off, yeah? I think we're getting a bit too heated. Look, we're gonna head down the beach. Are you sure you don't want to join us, Espoir? I promise to make sure that Teo stays on his best behavior. Sorry, Leo, but I've already made plans with Ren. And I seriously doubt they'll be able to get along. You know how Teo can get. Yeah, you've got a point there. Well, alright then. He leans closer to me, almost as if he didn't want the other two eavesdropping. If anything happens, I'll be in the area. Just come find me, okay? I will. Thanks, Leon. I give his arm a soft squeeze and turn my attention back to Ren. But by the way he looks at us, I can only assume that he didn't like how close I was standing to my childhood friend. Though, that could have also been because Teo was still around, and honestly, I couldn't blame him. Regardless, I reach for his hand once more and tug him towards the cafe. 
making a point of ignoring Teo's crass words as we went along. I barely notice how Ren's mood immediately changes when my attention is back on him, and he follows along like a lost puppy. We eventually arrive at the Driftwood Cafe, and the smell of fresh pastries and brewed coffee flood my senses as it wafts through the open windows. Ooh. And just as I had thought, the cafe looked as though it had only recently opened, though it didn't seem as busy or crowded as I anticipated. Pulling me from my thoughts, Ren ushers me into one of the empty tables before he goes off to make an order with a pleased look on his face. It was a bit strange how he didn't want to look at the menu first, but I chalked it up to him wanting to surprise me. He's barely gone for five minutes before he returns once more, taking a seat in front of me with a huff. It's okay, Ren. I'm not gonna let that Tao man hurt you. I'm not gonna let him call you Buttercup, even though that is kind of an adorable name, and I kind of want to call you Buttercup now. A comfortable silence washes over us, and I watch as he absentmindedly fiddles with the ends of his hair. Was he still concerned about what Teo said about his appearance earlier? Maybe it'd be a good idea to take his mind off of it. Hey, Ren. Almost immediately, he perks up with wide eyes. How do you manage to keep your hair so fluffy? It always looks so good. Ren seems to flush instantly at my words, and he sheepishly ducks his head lower to hide his reddening cheeks. You like it? I, uh, I usually just angle a blow dryer below my chin and blast the heat, and it just stays like that afterwards. Does that work? Oh, so you don't need to use any products or anything? N not really. Just when I thought he'd got over his timid personality, it slowly came crawling back. Was this really who he was? Ren must have taken my silence as a lack of response, seeing as he tries striking up another conversation. So, work's going good for you, huh? Finally got that promotion? Ah, uh, yeah, I did. I was honestly surprised when I first got my promotion, considering how I've only moved back here recently. But Eleanor's been really helpful by showing me the ropes and... Wait, how did you know I got promoted? Oh, your co-worker told me all about it yesterday, after you left. Yeah, where, where, where is Eleanor? Did we ever find her? I don't think we found Eleanor. Ren? 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 Where is Eleanor? Eleanor, right? She seemed really proud of you. Anyways, what were you saying about her showing you the ropes? I barely noticed how he managed to change the conversation back to me as I recounted all the times Eleanor helped me through my first week of working at the library. It eventually reached the point where it felt like I had been talking for hours, and it wasn't until something caught my eye did I finally stop. I'm gonna say, you've got something in your hair, because even though I want to say that goth style is pretty cool, which I assume is maybe his actual style, I'm gonna say you got something in your hair. And that way, I direct the attention on sweet baby Buttercup Ren. At my words, Ren seems almost bashful as he sheepishly starts picking at the strands of his pink hair. But he seems to miss the small piece of fluff, no matter how many times he tugs at his roots. Here, let me... Stifling a laugh, I reach over the table to pluck the offending item out of his hair. Ren only seems to lean closer into my touch, while his cheeks flush a light shade of red. And, just as I pull the piece of fluff out... Order 25! Is that us? Before I could get a word in, Ren was jumping out of his seat and meandering his way towards the kiosk. It was really a sight to behold, seeing Ren tower over most of the other customers who were waiting in line. Even the cashier herself, who seemed to be at least six feet tall, had to crane her neck upwards just to look at him. My goodness, Ren! Why aren't you playing basketball or something? But before I could blink twice, Ren was already on his way back with a large tray of delicious food. Oh no. I'm getting hungry. He seats himself back in his original spot with a pleased smile and begins to lay out the dishes in front of me. Oh, this is... A chocolate croissant? Oh, sugar cookie. Oh, cake. Oh, scone. Uh, I want the cookie. I like the cookie. I don't know if it matters, but I like the cookie. 
A scrumptious cookie sits next to my beverage, and I almost heard my stomach rumble at the sight. How did Ren know this was my favorite thing to order? Oh, he ordered it for me? Granted, it wasn't like I've been to the Driftwood Cafe before, but this was usually what I'd order at any other cafe. It was honestly like he could read my mind. Or that maybe he's been stalking me for quite some time? And what was even more mind-boggling was that he didn't even need to look at the menu beforehand. It was like he just knew. Ugh. Don't forget your drink. Ren shoots me another gentle smile of his before placing my drink before me. No way! The drink he placed in front of me, it was... I would like a smoothie with my cookie. Oh, I already have one. <laughs> the inviting aroma of fruit floods my senses, and that alone was what assured me that Ren ordered my favorite smoothie. Just like the ones I usually bring on my way to work sometimes. I, I hope this is okay. Unfortunately, this cafe doesn't really have much to offer, judging from the menu I saw online. Ah, so that's how he knew what to order. I even tried asking for napkins earlier, but I don't think they heard me. M maybe I should try again? I almost feel bad for him, but I also felt grateful for ordering me something that I'd normally eat at a cafe. Ren makes sure everything is on the table before putting the tray aside, and it was then that I noticed what he had ordered himself. On his plate sat a strawberry sweet roll, alongside a cup of coffee that was an alarming shade of black. Ooh. He seems to pick up on my inquisitive stare, if the innocent tilt of his head was anything to go by. Do you want my meal instead? We can swap if you want. I, I don't mind. Oh, honey. This was supposed to be a date, right? Deciding to tease him a little, I shoot Ren a sly grin. That's okay, but you could offer me a bite instead. <laughs> Aww. Ren almost seems to combust on the spot as his cheeks turn red and he almost chokes on his own spit. He looks down at his food before glancing back at me, only to look down once more to scoop up a bite-sized piece of his food. I watch as Ren's cheeks turn a deep shade of red while he brings his fork closer to me, and, not wanting to be seen as a coward, I lean in to take a bite. His eyes widen almost immediately, and he seems hyper-focused on the way my mouth wraps around the fork before I lick my lips and let out a pleased hum. Hey now, Ren. This is a safe-for-work playthrough. Mmm, it's yummy. Try some. The pink-haired man seems to have an awkwardly long staring contest with his own fork, <laughs> before scooping up yet another small piece and taking a bite. Ren's cheeks are still scarlet red, and he seems almost fidgety with how his leg keeps bouncing under the table. So I decide to take pity on him, and not to tease him for it. With a knowing smile, I start digging into my own meal with a pleased hum. Yes, eating a giant cookie with a knife and fork like a psycho. Aww. Eventually, we ended up finishing our meals, and decided to do a bit of window shopping to pass the time. I had nothing else to do today, and Ren seemed insistent on spending the rest of his time with me, so I agreed. We passed by a few clothing stores, ice cream stalls, surfboard rentals, and many other interesting buildings, though nothing really caught my eye. But, just as I thought I'd lost all hope, one store in particular catches my eye. In one of the display windows, I spotted this cute little rabbit plushie in the style of Haruko's likeness. <gasps> I mean, it even came with his limited edition sorcerer outfit and everything. Oh, I couldn't believe they were selling these things here, of all places, and at such a cheap price, too. Cute! Ren seems to notice what I was not so subtly gawking at, but before we could enter the store, the cashier walks in front of the display stand and blocks our view. Ma'am? She drops a box of miscellaneous items at her feet and begins stocking the shelf next to the plushies, before she finally notices us standing by the window. I don't miss the way her eyes widen at Ren, obviously taking an immediate liking to him. Hey now, that's my yandere Kool-Aid you're gawking at. There's this guy named Teo, you, you, can, you can have him. You'll find him in the trash! And almost shamelessly pushes a strand of hair behind her ears before giving him a small wave. 
Sneaking a glance at the taller man beside me, I noticed how Ren wasn't even paying at any attention to her. Instead, keeping himself busy by scratching at his jaw and kicking at the stray cobblestone rocks by his feet. But the cashier seemed adamant about getting Ren's attention, considering how she felt the need to abandon her spot by the shelves and make her way towards us. Oh, Oh, she's so tiny! H hi there! Welcome to Seaside Trinkets. My name is Olivia. Can I help you with anything? Also, can I get your number? Please? 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 Oh, no, we're just looking around. But thanks for... We recently got some new beachwear merch, if you're interested in checking them out. Was she seriously ignoring me? Alright, fair enough. Oh, you kind of look like someone I know. Have we met before? Maybe we went to the same school. <laughs> Be gone, fuck! N me? I don't think so. R really? I definitely would have remembered a face like yours. Actually, now that I've got a good look at you... I watch as she shamelessly takes in Ren's appearance before crossing her arms over her chest and leaning back. You also remind me of one of those characters from a cartoon that's been gaining a lot of traction here. Apparently, one of the locations from that show is based on Corland Bay's main beach. Really? Are you talking about Attack on Giant? Is that the name of it? Then, yeah. I don't really know much about those cartoons, but our company recently started selling some stuff for it to entice the tourists. It is not a cartoon. It is anime, and it is art. Do you want to come inside and take a look? Ren doesn't seem to answer her question, and instead casts an inquisitive glance in my direction. It was like he was asking me for my opinion, and I can only assume it was because he knew about my interest in anime. It was thoughtful of him to do that, but I kind of wanted him to tell that rude worker off instead. Wait, did I really want him to do that? What was wrong with me? Oh, she, she's being a little pushy. I'm sure that the cashier just took an interest in him, and there was nothing wrong with that. It's not like we were a couple anyway, but we were supposed to be on a date right now, and Ren did declare himself as my boyfriend earlier. But I just assumed he said that in order to get Teo off my back. No, Espoir, he said that with his whole entire chest. Does that mean... was he feeling the same way as me? Was jealousy on his mind when we talked with Leon and Teo earlier? I wasn't sure how I felt about this new discovery. Espoir. Huh? Do you want to go look at the items? We've still got a bit of time to kill. Ma'am! Listen, ma'am, you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get bonked and not in a way that you like. Here, why don't I show you the most recent stock? We haven't shown this to the general public yet. I'm sure you'll love it. Uh-oh. Without warning, Olivia, was that her name, reaches out for Ren's arm and practically drags him inside the store. Ma'am, you are kidnapping my Yandere! He lets out a surprise sound before leaning back and trying to grab a hold of my own arm as well, but I was just out of reach. Aww. There was nothing else I could do but watch as Ren helplessly gets pulled into the store. It's back here in the stock rooms. I'm gonna take him to the back rooms? Goodness! Are you, are you sure you're not the Yandere, miss? Usually we don't allow customers downstairs, but you're a real hottie, so I'll let you take a sneak peek. Ma'am? No, actually, I'm good. Don't worry, we won't get caught. I'm sure your girlfriend won't mind if I borrow you for a bit. Come on, you're just you're just gonna do this right in front of the person you assume is his girlfriend? You're just gonna... You're just gonna I mean, that's bold of you. That's bold, but... Olivia, come on. The wink she sends him would have made anyone feel uncomfortable, and had Ren turned around, I would have seen the angry look on his face. But instead, he leans in close to her face and whispers in a hushed tone that I could barely hear from my spot outside the store. Oh, I'm still outside the store? <laughs> if she wasn't standing there right now, I would have shoved your desperate buns down that staircase without a second thought. Cheese and rice, Ren! Goodness! I mean, a simple no thank you, I'm in a relationship would have sufficed. But then again, he is, he is, he is crazy, Yandere. 
And right now, it's really fluffing, tempting. What? What? <laughs> From their current position, it looked as though they were having a really intimate conversation, and I felt the sudden urge to look away. Why was I getting so bothered over this? I know we aren't exactly together, but Ren shouldn't be off flirting with other people while on a date with someone else. Besides, this was exactly the type of thing Teo would do to me when we were... dating. He'd go around shamelessly flirting with other people, sometimes while I was in the very same room. And what made it worst was that he'd simply laugh it off by saying that he was just messing around and that I shouldn't be getting so worked up. I think Teo is a piece of crap. I think he's a, he's a piece of bun crap, and I don't like him. I honestly couldn't believe that Ren was doing the same thing to me right now. Espa, don't think that way. Ren is literally going to murder this girl for you. But still, there was this nagging voice at the back of my head that kept telling me not to give up on him so easily. Ren was the one who confidently stood his ground when Teo got a bit suggestive, so maybe I should do the same. Would he even mind? Before I can stop myself, my feet start to move on autopilot as I march towards the two of them and reach for Ren's sleeve. Am I gonna have to show this girl the hands, but like maybe the softer versions of the hands? I give it a hesitant tug, and I swear I could almost feel the relief wash over his body because of it. Ren's entire demeanor seems to change in that moment, and he turns to me with a relieved smile on his soft features. I don't really have any interest in this store. Can we go somewhere else? Y yeah of course. Sorry, Livia. W wait hold on. Ren carelessly shoves Olivia's outstretched hand aside and gently places an arm over my shoulder instead. And just like that, he's already guiding me out of the store and back into the busy street. I can hear Olivia sputter out confused sounds as she watches the two of us leave and I suddenly felt guilty for causing a rift between them. I mean, she was... she was kind of stepping out of her boundaries right there. <laughs> no matter how many times I try to brush it aside, I still couldn't get my mind off of what had just occurred earlier. What if... what if Ren was interested in her? Granted, he probably shouldn't have blatantly flirted with her while on a date with me, but he wasn't exactly the most confident guy. Would he still be able to talk to her again if things didn't work out between us? No, I shouldn't be thinking that. Peering up to gauge his expression, I noticed how he didn't really look all that upset about leaving her. If anything, he seemed rather content to be walking down the street with his fingers entwined with mine once more. Oh, I can feel him give my hand a protective squeeze as he looks down at me with his soft blue eyes, and all of my worries somehow melt away. Maybe I did make the right choice after all. It might have been selfish, but it was worth having Ren look at me with such a gentle expression. Eventually, the sun starts to set behind the ocean as Ren and I continue to walk along the beach walk. Most of the conversation was geared towards me and my interests again, but every time I tried to learn more about Ren, he only seemed to divert the conversation back to me once more. But the more I focused on this odd behavior, the more I began to pick up on his social habits as well. I learned that Ren would subtly pick at the sleeves of his cardigan whenever he got nervous, or how he'd scratch at his jaw whenever the conversation strayed down a path he didn't feel comfortable with. <laughs> I'm learning your moves, Ren! His little quirks told me more about himself than the dead-end conversations that only led back to me, and I was content with knowing more about him than I did yesterday. Ren no longer felt like a stranger I had met at the library, but rather someone I could consider a friend. Except, friends aren't supposed to get jealous whenever they see them flirt with someone else. Jeez, what was wrong with me? It had barely been two days, and I was already contemplating whether or not I truly saw Ren in a romantic light. Was I going too fast? All of these thoughts were starting to get a bit overwhelming, and... Angel, hello? Huh? You're spacing out on me again. There's that look again. He keeps peering down at me with so much adoration in his eyes, and if I didn't know any better, I would think that he was already halfway in love with me. <laughs> I, I think he's way farther than halfway in love with you. 
But that was a very conceited thought, and probably wasn't even true. S sorry I was just thinking about things. Are you going to share those things with the rest of the class? <laughs> he sends me a playful smile and a gentle nudge into my side, and I couldn't help but laugh. When did we become so comfortable with each other? And when did he lose his stutter? Mm -hmm. It's nothing, really. Maybe a bit embarrassing, but... Well, I was wondering... How do you feel about... My sentence gets cut short when a drop of rain lands on my cheek. Oh no! Instinctively, I look up and find myself wondering how I didn't notice those dark clouds in the sky sooner. Oh no! Oh no! We're caught in a romantic rainstorm! Our clothes will be all wet! Oh no! All of a sudden, more droplets fall down until it's all but pouring rain and forcing everyone in the area to find cover. Ah! Over here. Ren doesn't seem to pay much attention when he grabs me by the hand and pulls me underneath one of the awnings of a nearby building. He shields me from the rain with his body, and I couldn't help but feel tiny with the way his arms cage me in as he rests them against the wall. Ooh. Uh. <sighs> Anime noises. We look at each other in silence for a brief moment before erupting in laughter. Perhaps it was because of the adrenaline from all the panicked running, or the fact that Ren's hair was starting to lose its fluffiness, but I couldn't hold back from letting out a fit of giggles. This only seems to spur Ren on as well, until we're both wheezing out our lungs and gulping down air. I... <laughs> I can't remember the last time I ran that fast. <laughs> Me too. The looming sound of thunder echoes from afar, and drowns out our laughter until we're both silent once more. Once we both calm down, Ren moves me further away from the rain, before casting a glance behind him. Wait here. I'll buy us an umbrella so we can get out of this rain. But you'll get soaked. <laughs> Tis a sacrifice I'm willing to make. I roll my eyes at his corny joke and send him off with an amused smile. He doesn't look back before he makes a mad dash out into the rain and down the street towards the closest convenience store. Though the rain only seems to get heavier the moment he leaves, and I find myself pressing even further against the wall behind me to avoid the recoil of the rain bouncing off the pavement. There wasn't much for me to do while I waited for Ren to return, aside from watching people scramble around for shelter. And just like that, the carefree sounds of laughter echoing from down the street capture my attention as I watch Leon, Teo, and Jay all run to cover like their life depended on it. No, their perfect, uh, $200 haircuts will get messed up. Well, it seems as though their beach outing got cut short as well. Glancing back once more, I barely make out the figure of Leon using his bag as a makeshift umbrella as he ducks under one of the awnings of an ice cream stand. All while Teo and Jay trail behind at a leisurely pace, kicking and splashing water at each other in the rain. I had to look away the moment Teo started to ruin his shirt. How dare you? And I had an inkling that it was so that he could show off. And knowing Jehun, he'd follow along like a mindless grunt, because that's what he always does when it came to his friends. A part of me felt like calling out to the group to see if I could wait out the storm alongside them, but they all seemed to be enjoying themselves, and I didn't want to get in between that. Plus, I did promise Ren that I'd wait for him here. Even if he was taking a sweet time, was he ever going to return? There was still no sign of him or his comfy-looking cardigan, which is probably going to be soaked out of the end of this. And I was beginning to wonder if he really did ditch me. After all, it must have been more than 15 minutes by now. What if he got caught up in something? Or what if he went back to see that cashier lady again? No, don't, don't think that is well. Her store did happen to be on the same street, but after spending the afternoon with Ren and getting to know him, I concluded that he wasn't the type of person to do such a thing. But if he was, then that would only add insult to injury, considering how Teo had done the same to me multiple times in the past. Although, if I was being honest with myself, it did seem as though they had chemistry. If the chemistry was person plus person who will be murdered. 
especially well wait oh wait oh no is he is he off to do that are, are we gonna see someone on the, are we gonna see olivia on the news are we gonna see olivia on a t-shirt <laughs> ren no especially with how she looked at him and touched his arm as though it was the most natural thing in the world she apparently knew him as well or at least he looked recognizable enough why did that thought make my blood boil Thankfully, the rain was there to cool me off, as well as soak the ends of my outfit and make everything feel damp and uncomfortable. Ooh. Mm. Was Ren really coming back? It shouldn't take this long to buy an umbrella. Well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. <laughs> Maybe something did come up. I'm sure he'll be back. As if on cue, I spot a familiar patch of pink hair from within the misty rain frantically sprinting with an umbrella in one hand and a bag under the other. Angel? Espoir? Ah! He almost slams into me before stopping just in time, and I could tell by the way he was wheezing that he ran all the way back here without stopping. S sorry I thought I almost lost you there for a second. It's so hard to see in this weather. Jeez, Ren, what took you so long? I almost wanted to cuss him out for taking well over twenty minutes just to buy a single umbrella, but the genuinely apologetic look on his features made me hold my tongue. Sorry, I ran into your friends from earlier, which took forever for me to shake them off. And then the convenience store ended up closing early due to a sudden weather change. So then I had to go to that awful souvenir shop with that obnoxious and clingy cashier again and... He was talking a mile a minute, and I was worried he'd end up biting his tongue. Gently, I raise a hand to signal him to calm down, and his intense monologue soon comes to a halt. I'm really sorry about making you wait so long, but... Ta-da! I did manage to get an umbrella. Oh, among other things as well. <laughs> he gives it a small twirl in his hands, sending droplets of water all over the place. We can start heading back home now if you want. Unless you want to go somewhere specific. Uh. Jeez, that's harsh. Forget it, I'm going home alone. Golly. Actually, uh, I kind of want to ask where does he want to go? Well, my place isn't far. We could wait out the storm there if you like. Oh yes, let's see your place. I even have a heater and dryer we could use. The image of me sitting in front of a warm, cozy heater was too hard to resist, and I ended up agreeing with Ren's suggestion. Yeah, because my house got rats. Despite the heavy downpour of rain, we managed to make it to Ren's apartment complex in one piece. I guess he really wasn't lying when he said his apartment wasn't far from mine. But judging from the pristine interior and fully functioning elevator, his building seemed to be in far better shape compared to my apartment. The elevator ride could have been a little less awkward, though, if it weren't for the slow ascend and tacky music. Or for the fact that Ren deemed it appropriate to shake his hair like a wet dog and get water droplets everywhere. Cute. He, he is a living puppy. Once the elevator doors slide open, I was immediately met with a grandiose corridor and large spacious doors, and I found myself wondering how much it costs to live in a place like this. Don't look too hard at how messy my place is, okay? I wasn't expecting to have someone over today, so I didn't bother cleaning up. <laughs> I'm sure it's not as bad as my place, or the entire apartment I live in, for that matter. Uh oh that bad, huh? Maybe you could live with me instead. Sorry, did you say something? Uh, no, I mean, well, I was just thinking. It's a bit strange, but no one lives on this floor aside from me. I'm not really sure why. But I'm not going to complain. I can make as much noise as I want, and no one would notice. That's probably going to be information that we need later. Ren shoots me a mischievous grin, and I find myself wondering what he meant by that. Like, loud music and stuff? Movies? Yeah, something like that. He unlocks the door with some electronic card attached to his keychain, and the moment the door swings open, I let out an audible gasp. <gasps> Ren doesn't seem phased in the slightest as he flicks on the lights and walks into his own home, but I could only stand at the entrance to his foyer in shock. Yes, foyer. He had a whole 
darn foyer in his apartment. Was this even an apartment? Surely a penthouse would have made more sense. Holy crap, Ren! Is there something wrong? What is it? I know the decor is kind of tacky, but it came with the apartment, and I haven't found the time to do anything about it yet. I'm sorry, but are you the long-lost heir of a billionaire or something? This place is huge! And, oh my god, is that marble? <laughs> you got the marble? <laughs> no, I just... I get paid a lot for my job. Enough to afford rent, at least. You know, I don't think I've asked you this, but... What exactly is your job? Oh, uh, my job is... I guess you could say I'm a programmer. I don't know, I just take on a few jobs every so often. Nothing super fancy or anything. Nothing super fancy? Ren, you have marble flooring. <laughs> Leaving the newly discovered programmer at the entrance, I curiously venture further into his apartment. Marble's a pain in the butt to clean, too. Oh, Angel, do you want some slippers? The floors can get cold, and your shoes are probably soaked, right? Turning around, I notice Ren opening a small closet and pulling out a pair of dark house slippers. He looks at me with a curious expression, but makes no effort to hand them over. Only if you want them. I'll take them, but only because they might be... Duchy. Ren lets out a puff of laughter through his nose at my joke, but doesn't seem to deny it. As I put them on, I noticed how they were in my ex exact size. Ren, you buying shoes for me? And it made me wonder if he had bought a bunch of expensive house slippers in varying sizes. But funny as that imagery was, how did Ren accurately guess my shoe size without seeing my feet? Here, why don't I show you to the bathroom? I'll find you something to wear in the meantime, while your clothes are in the dryer. Or would you prefer a towel? Sorry, I don't usually invite people over. Seeing his timid side resurface once more gives me the sudden urge to tease him. Just a towel? <laughs> Just a towel? Nothing else? Yeah, to, to, to keep you warm instead of taking a shower, unless you'd prefer a blanket, because I'm pretty sure I have an electric... Oh. <laughs> it was as if all the gears inside his head were finally clicking together. N no, no, I didn't mean... I meant a towel that you can wear over your clothes, not, not just you in a towel. Unless you'd want to, but that's... Why would you... Uh, I'm just going to shut up now. <laughs> Got him. That wasn't what I meant at all, but his reaction was priceless nonetheless. Anyways, I'll show you to the bathroom. You can use whatever you want in there. Nothing is off limits. First it was offering to spend the night at my place, then it was asserting himself as my boyfriend in front of my friends. He really doesn't care about personal boundaries, huh? I was beginning to think that Ren didn't really seem to mind when it came to me invading his personal bubble as well. Though he still seemed pretty standoffish around Teo, Jay, and Leon, and it took him a while to warm up to Eleanor back at the library. But I chalked it all up to him being his usual shy and eccentric self. Speaking of being shy, I still noticed how Ren didn't seem to be switching up his personality as much anymore, and I was beginning to think that he was showing me his real side. Up until now, everything felt real and genuine, and I found that we could bounce back witty retorts between each other more easily. Though every now and again he might slip up and stutter, but I just assumed it was because my teasing made him flustered. So maybe the timid side of him was genuine, after all? But I'll leave some clothes for you outside, and put the plushie I bought for you in your room. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah! Thanks. Great, I was zoning out again, and completely missed half of what he was saying. Something about clothes? And a plushie he bought? Was he talking about the Haruko plushie I was eyeing up earlier? I mean, he was carrying a gift bag from that souvenir shop earlier. Did he really buy me that toy? Ren, however, doesn't seem to pick up on my confusion, though, and invitingly opens the bathroom door for me with a soft smile. 
And so, without trying to make things awkward, I quickly slip inside and lean against the door for support. Which was fortunate for me, because one sweep of the bathroom had me stumbling back in surprise. Ooh. Whoa. Even his restroom looked expensive. I was afraid of touching anything, fearing I'd accidentally break it and end up paying for it. Glancing around again, I noticed how his countertop seemed to be void of any dental care, hairbrushes, and skincare products, though a few bottles of concealer and an open box of hair dye sat in the corner near the sink. Well, I guess that answers my burning question on whether or not he naturally had pink hair. Natural pink hair? Who do you think he is? Tomba? But now it made me wonder, if Ren does dye his hair, then what was his natural hair color? There were still so many things I didn't know about that soft-looking guy, and I was beginning to question whether coming here was a good idea or not. With a sigh, I decided not to waste any more time thinking about irrelevant things and instead turn my attention back to the shower. Quickly stripping out of my clothes, You really want to do that in his house? I jump into the unnecessarily large glass booth and turn the water on. Glancing at Ren's shelf of albeit limited, hair products, I couldn't help but notice that one brand in particular just so happened to be the exact same as mine. Did we use the same shampoo? He didn't really smell like me, but maybe that was because I wasn't paying much attention. Or did you swipe it from my apartment? I mean, who randomly smells people out of the blue anyway? <laughs> Shaking my head at such a silly notion, I began to scrub away the lingering smell of rain from my body and quickly finish washing up. Bundled up in a warm towel, I cracked open the large door to poke my head out into the hallway. True to his word, Ren left a small pile of clothing outside the bathroom, neatly stacked and propped against the side of the wall. Bringing the contents back inside, I noticed that one piece of clothing in particular was a rather comfy-looking hoodie. Ooh. But the design on the front, however, was rather morbid-looking and didn't really suit Ren's vibes. Maybe from a horror film or something. Eh. Shrugging my shoulders, I put the hoodie on and instantly got enveloped by the sheer amount of fabric. I mean, it made sense considering Ren's large and lanky frame, but this was just absurd. I had to stifle a laugh from the amusing sight in the fogged-up mirror, but I had to admit that the soft fabric felt nice and warm against my skin. Even the scent that came from it felt oddly comforting somehow. Turning back to the remaining clothes in the pile, I gently pick up the next item and try to put it on. The grey sweatpants didn't seem to fit the length of my legs, despite the number of times I tried to roll up the elastic. But luckily Ren was thoughtful enough to give me other alternatives. The dark pair of shorts seemed like the better option, especially since it came with a drawstring and deep pockets. Ooh. Once I was fully dressed, I step out of the bathroom and aimlessly walk around until I hear the faint sounds of a TV playing. Feeling curious, I follow the source of the sound down the hallway. Aching news! Sudden storm hits the bay as gale force winds and <coughs> knock over street signs and even awnings. <coughs> Just believe that this sudden change in weather will die down soon, and to stay safe in do- I continue to follow the noise until it suddenly cuts out and changes into a glaring monotone sound, indicating that the television must have lost all signal. And soon enough, I found myself in Ren's spacious lounge room. Oh. Aside from the TV, the rest of the lights were off, but I could still make out most of the dark shapes within the room with ease. It was just as ostentatious as the rest of the house, though I couldn't help but feel like it lacked any form of life. It just didn't seem like someone actually lived here. Hmm. The furniture was gaudy, yet tasteless. There was hardly any personal decoration or colors, and there was nothing that really screamed Ren to me. There were no personal touches, photos, items, hobbies, nothing. Just tacky furniture and the bland smell of something sterile. If I was being honest, it gave off the same vibes as a dentist's clinic or a hospital. Maybe he recently moved in? Oh. Who moved in? Surprised by the sudden voice, I spin on my heel only to find Ren coming out from one of the hallways with a new set of comfy clothing. He seemed much more at ease like this, especially with the gentle expression on his face. 
I watch as he takes a respectful glance at my attire, before sheepishly averting his attention to the ends of his sleeve. Sorry, that's the smallest pair of clothing I own. It looks really good on you, though. Oh, thanks. You can even keep them if you want. The sound of thunder rumbling in the distance cuts off Ren's mumbling, and I involuntarily step closer to him. Oh. Without missing a beat, he reaches out and rests a protective hand on my shoulder to steady me. Ren idly glances out of the window, before turning his undivided attention back to me once more, only this time with a determined look. It's really boring, huh? I could only nod my head at his words, suddenly feeling sheepish all of a sudden. I really should have checked the weather forecast before I went out today. But to be fair, it didn't look as though it started spontaneously raining when I left my apartment this morning. And I guess I was enjoying my time with Ren to the point where I didn't even realize the weather was turning sour. Angel? Sorry, what did you say? Ah, uh, I just asked if you wanted to stay the night here. You know, seeing how hard it's raining out there, and your clothes haven't finished drying yet. It'd be no trouble. I really wouldn't mind at all. But only if you wanna, of course. Staying at his place for the night? Well, this certainly isn't how I expected to end my day. But would it really be that bad? It definitely beats waiting out the storm and walking home with a bunch of puddles everywhere. Uh... I d I yeah. I could either spend the night, or I could spend the night. H how about we spend a, a gl spend a glitchy night? What was that? Did I really want to stay the night at Ren's place? I guess I did. I couldn't really remember otherwise. I guess I could stay the night, if that's really okay with you. Yeah, of course. It's totally fine. Wow, he really was an energetic, eccentric man, wasn't he? Aww. Let me know if you need any more pillows or blankets. Or if the room gets too cold. I haven't worked out how to use the fancy heater system yet, but I can definitely try. Also, you already know where the bathroom is, but if you... Okay, I think I got it, Ren. I shoot him a reassuring smile as I turn to face him at the door. I should have gotten used to his attentive and observant behavior by now, but it still felt like a foreign side of him that I hadn't fully uncovered. Still, at least he wasn't stuttering as much anymore. <laughs> I know. Sorry. I just want you to be as comfortable as possible, so just treat this house like it's your own. Alright. Gotcha. He looks like he doesn't want to leave, and instead lingers in front of the door a little while longer. Are you sure there isn't anything else you'd need? Anything at all? Eh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get through all of these, but uh no, no, I'm good. <laughs> Which is probably what I would say in this situation anyway. Like I have a million questions, but now nah, I'm not gonna ask any of them. Alright then. If you need anything, my room is just three doors down. Don't even have to knock. Just let yourself in, okay? Okay, gotcha. But I think I'll knock just to be safe. You really don't have to, but all right. Well, if that's everything, I'll let you get some sleep now. Good night, Espoir. Sweet dreams. I watch in silence as Ren turns on his heel and makes his way towards his own room down the hall. Shaking my head at his odd behavior, I close the door behind me and slowly make my way towards the bed. I noticed that the Haruko plushie Ren had bought earlier was sitting on top of the sheets. Oh and I gently bring it closer to my chest and give it a soft squeeze. So he really did buy this for me after all. The faintest hint of cherry and mint emits from the toy, and makes my mind drift to thoughts of that strange pink-haired man once more. He was still as odd as usual, but some parts of him were starting to feel rather endearing. I noticed how he was no longer stuttering as much or acting as shy, and it made me wonder if we were getting closer. Now that I really thought about it, how did I feel about Ren? Uh, I'm crushing on him. You, you almost went into a jealous rage, Espoir. Okay, so maybe I did find him rather endearing and attractive. 
Ren was very considerate and attentive towards me during our date, and I could see myself wanting to go on another date in the near future. He certainly had boyfriend potential, but I still needed to work up the nerve to make it lead towards that direction. He seemed far too hesitant to do it himself, but it would have been nice to see him put more effort into it as well. Oh well, just knowing Ren wanted to spend the entire day with me is enough. Rolling onto my side, I hug the plushie closer so I can be surrounded by his comforting scent, and slowly drift off to sleep. Oh. Actually, I, I want to start at the end to see what these, uh, what all these other things do. Can I get a goodnight kiss? <laughs> uh, did I really just ask that? I mean, I guess I did want to lighten the mood a bit, but that seemed a bit too much. Almost sheepishly, I dared to look up and gauge Ren's reaction. He seemed to be taking it just as awkwardly as I was, judging from how red his face and neck gets. J just kidding, I don't really know why I... Before I could react, Ren was already leaning down and pressing his soft lips against my own. Oh. I barely noticed his hand gently coming to hold my shoulder to keep me steady as his head tilts to the side. The kiss was brief and chaste, but it still made the both of us flustered. Is... is that okay? Huh? Uh, huh? Okay, I... good. I'm, uh... I'm glad. Uh, and he's gone. Before I can even respond, he's already turning on his heels and speed walking towards his room. What if I just say, I like him. I like him. He's silly. Okay, so I guess he was kind of cute and endearing in his own way. Ren was very considerate and attentive towards me today, which I really liked, and he even bought me a plushie without being asked. That instantly raises him from a 4 out of 10 to a solid 7 out of 10. Yeah. Ren certainly had boyfriend potential, but things were still too awkward between us for it to lead in that direction. But still, it was nice to think about. He was certainly nice to think about. Can I sleep in your bed instead? Mm. You want to... in my room? Did I just say that? I can't keep letting these intrusive thoughts win. I, I don't mind, but, but what's wrong with the guest bedroom? You're not in it! He peers behind my head to glance around the room behind me before sheepishly meeting my gaze once more. Nothing's wrong, I just... I just wanted to tease you a little bit, is all. Nothing's wrong, I just... I wanted to tease you a little bit, is all. Sorry, I don't really know why I said that. Oh, I see. Haha. <laughs> don't worry about it then. And to be honest, I kind of enjoy it when you tease me. Well, if everything's okay, I guess I'll let you get some sleep then. Y yeah Okay. All right, then. Great. I successfully made the mood completely mortifying again. <laughs> what if I write, eh, he's all right. What was there to say? We still didn't know each other that well, but he seemed very kind and considerate towards me. I feel like I just needed to get to know Ren better before I could decide on a strong opinion of him. Maybe we could get closer in the future. He'd have to actually try and put the effort in, though. Because right now, it felt like I was doing all the work. Ah, well, there was no point in me stressing over something trivial. What's behind that locked door? The... locked door? Uh, what door? Oh, you mean the one at the end of the hallway. All of a sudden, his timid persona is back again. What could he possibly be hiding in that room to make him act like this? There's nothing in particular, just, uh... I'm currently using it as a storage room for all the furniture from my old place. It's... it's really messy in there. I'd be embarrassed if you saw what's behind that door. Oh, yeah, okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. Great. Now I'm the person who threw accusations at someone kind enough to offer me a place to stay for the night. Still, it was nice to know that he did own some kind of furniture. Sorry, I guess I was just really curious about it. Usually people don't leave the lights on behind locked doors. Oh, yeah. I'd be happy to show you what's behind that door when it's not so... cluttered.
He's creepy. He kind of is, but he kind of isn't. What was there to say? He still had that flippant personality of his going on, and he somehow knew all of my favorite things without asking me. That sounded like a grade-A creep to me, but I didn't have any solid proof to back up my theory. But I guess I shouldn't be calling him a creep when I was the one who willingly agreed to go to his apartment, despite only knowing him for two whole days. There was also that break-in that Violet mentioned yesterday, but Ren didn't fit the description at all. Ah, well, I shouldn't be concerning myself over this. I still had the new lock installed, so I doubt they'd want to come back. Okay, so I went all the way back and uh, invited Ren into my bed and made the smoochy kisses with him. <laughs> so let's see what that changes if you invite Ren over to your house and let him sleep in your bed. <laughs> The sounds of birds chirping happily outside pulled me from my slumber, as the streaks of sunlight peek through the blinds of my window and cast a warm glow across my face. Groggily, I turn on my side and smush my head into the pillow to block out the light, only to hear the faint sounds of tapping to my left. Cracking one eye open, I was surprised by the scene in front of me. Ren was already awake, perched up against the headboard as he idly scrolled through his phone. It seems he was waiting for me to wake up, judging by how he immediately puts his phone down as soon as we make eye contact, and sends me a soft smile. Almost sheepishly, I shoot him an awkward smile of my own, before covering my face with a pillow once more. Had Ren been watching me sleep? I hope I wasn't drooling. Morning, Angel. His voice pulls me from my thoughts, and I couldn't help but notice just how attractive he sounded in the morning. His gruff, sleepy tone was rather pleasant to hear, and I found myself wanting to continue the conversation. Lifting my head from the safety of my pillow, I was greeted with Ren's soft demeanor once more. I'd appreciate it if you weren't so chipper this early in the morning. You'd be chipper too if you realized that you weren't murdered in your sleep last night. <laughs> Which can only mean one thing. That creepy guy didn't come back to your apartment last night. He seemed almost smug as he leans closer to me, and it was then that I realized just how pretty he looked underneath the morning light coming from my window. Oh. It wasn't fair that he got to look so ethereal and glowing this early in the day, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to praise his looks or throw a pillow at his head. <clears throat> Stop being pretty right now! <laughs> Ren doesn't seem to pick up on my speechless nature, though, as he continues to beam down at me with such a soft look. And I found myself wanting to look away in fear of making things even more awkward. I guess I did a good job, huh? He's a bit too smug. If you ever need my services again, I'd be more than happy to oblige. F for free, of course. You're really talkative in the mornings, aren't you? I can't help it. I got to wake up next to a real cutie this morning. Oh, uh. As if noticing how close he was to me, or maybe realizing that he had dropped his usual stutter, Ren immediately pulls back and turns his head away. Uh, uh, anyway, now that you're awake, did you... would you like to go out for breakfast? I think that cafe near the pier is open now. We could go check it out, but only if you want to. Why did he suddenly switch again? I figured we'd at least be a tiny bit closer, especially considering that we shared a bed, but maybe I was wrong. And had a good night kiss. You mean the Driftwood Cafe? I didn't know it was even open to the public yet. Really? Well, what better way to find out than by finding out, I guess. Huh. I rolled my eyes at his lame attempt at a joke before groaning into my pillow. Did he seriously want to go out for breakfast this early in the morning? Man, he was seriously a trooper. With a sigh, I reluctantly sit up and stretch my limbs. From that action alone, it was like I could feel Ren's eyes on me. But as soon as I turned my head, he was already staring holes into the blanket with a blush on his cheeks. Shaking my head to dismiss those thoughts, I let all of my joints pop before breaking the silence once more. So, Driftwood Cafe? 
He is a friend from university. Oh, you considered us friends? That's real cute, doll. Are we not friends? You always used to show up to some of my classes at university. Which was weird, because I'm pretty sure we studied different things. Maybe I just wanted to see you. Oh, how uncharacteristically thoughtful of him. Or see what you were wearing underneath. Never fluff in mind. <laughs> he is just a fling. Ha! Just a fling? I'm pretty sure you hit my lineup more than once. Wait, what? I thought you guys were just friends. Yeah, we're friends. Friends who were real close. Right, doll? <sighs> and what's wrong with your face, buttercup? I've never seen this man in my entire life. And I've never seen this woman in my life either. You guys are hilarious. With a sigh, I try my best to clear the air of any confusion. Alright, Teo's just a friend from university. You want to know what's hilarious? Buttercup's outfit over there. His outfit is precious. What if I walk home alone? I bet Ren's not gonna like that. <laughs> this is stupid. Forget it. It doesn't really matter what he was doing. Ren shouldn't have taken over 20 minutes to buy an umbrella. That was just ridiculous. Besides, it was getting cold and the wind was starting to pick up. If I stay out here any longer, I'll probably get swept away. Violet's flower shop should be nearby. Maybe I could wait out the storm there. I mean, it was only a few blocks away, and she did tell me about the spare key under one of the flower pots in case of an emergency. This was kind of an emergency, right? It's just a little rain, espoir. Just as I psyched myself up to sprint towards the next overhanging roof across the street, a cold hand wraps around my wrist and scares the absolute crap out of me. Yanking back, I instinctively turn around in panic before meeting Ren's worried blue eyes. Angel, where are you going? You shouldn't be running anywhere in this weather. Jeez, Ren, what took you so long? I almost wanted to cuss him out for taking over 20 minutes just to buy a single umbrella, but the genuinely apologetic look on his features made me hold my tongue. Uh, what if we offer to go to my apartment? Your apartment? Sure. It's close by anyway. I can walk you home. The image of me taking a nice warm bath after being out in this weather was too hard to resist, so I end up eagerly stepping under Ren's umbrella before heading back home. Oh, so we go into my place. In the end, Ren ended up walking me back home. Yet, despite being the one to hold the umbrella, he still got wet because he offered most of it to me. Ren really was considerate, but it didn't stop me from feeling bad whenever I saw the wet patch on his shoulder. Eventually enough, my apartment entrance comes into view, and I suddenly wish that time would slow down. I wasn't sure why, but I was enjoying my time with Ren, even though I still didn't know much about him. All that I did know was that he was very attentive when it came to me, and that he was willing to put in the effort to get to know me better. It was, honestly, very sweet seeing Ren be so considerate. He still came off a bit odd and eccentric at times, but that side of him was slowly starting to grow on me. Glancing back at the pink-haired man beside me once more, I watch as he carefreely twirls the umbrella in his grip and shoots me a playful smile. It seems as though he shared the same sentiment as me, judging by how his feet started slowing down the moment we ascended my apartment staircase. I mean, you slept in my room once before, who's to say that you can't do it again? With a smile, I turned to face Ren, only to realize that he was already looking at me with an all-too-familiar soft grin. So, here we are. Th thanks for going out with me today. I'm sorry it got cut short because of the weather. I really should have looked at the weather app before leaving, huh? It's fine. Maybe we could try this again another time. Preferably on a day without rain. Y yeah, I'd like that. We stand around at the entrance for a while before I... Before I... Save my game. Let's go from the bottom. And go up. Enter your apartment without a word. <laughs> oh, how awful. Almost abruptly, I turn around and start punching in the key code to enter my apartment complex. Uh, um... I can hear Ren stutter behind me, but I pay him no mind as the front door clicks open, and I rush inside. Oh, before you go, this is for you. 
Without another word, Ren shoves the bag he was holding into my arms with a forced smile. Peering inside, I notice the Haruko plushie I'd been eyeing earlier. He really went out of his way to get this for me. Wow. Well then, I'll be going. G goodbye Angel. Before I can respond, Ren was already turning on his heels and walking back the same way he came. Aww. Without looking back to see if Ren had left or not, I climb up the flight of stairs until I reach my floor. I highly doubt my landlord had fixed the elevator yet, if the caution tape was anything to go by. But it was difficult to focus on those things when all I could think about was the date I just went on with Ren. But a flash of white manages to pull me from my thoughts, and I notice Violet lingering near the stairwell entrance to our floor. Espoir! Hey, I'm guessing the weather put a fork in your plans too, huh? She moves to unlock her door, and I notice how one of her potted plants has been moved to the busted window at the end of the hallway. A busted window? Goodness. I'm guessing Violet had moved it to make use of the free rain, and make it easier to water her plants without the effort. Want to come in for a while? This weather is making me feel rather chilly. I can brew some tea to warm us up if you'd like. Sorry, Vi. As much as I'd love to, my social battery is kind of drained by now. Oh, that's okay. I totally get it. You just need some time alone to unwind, right? In that case, Carla over here is good company. She won't talk, but she'll listen to your problems without a complaint. She hands me a small bouquet made from an assortment of colored tulips before waving me off and stepping into her apartment. Thank you! The smell of lavender wafts out as she pokes her head out of the door, and the scent immediately calms my senses. My offer still stands if you ever change your mind, though. Just knock, and I'll get the kettle running. Enjoy the rest of your evening, Espoir. Toodles! Oh, Vi! Nothing bad better happen to Vi. Stepping into the comfort of my apartment, I discard my keys into the bowl and take off my shoes. Ignoring the awful squelching sound it makes, I try my best not to leave a puddle of water in my wake as I make my way into the lounge room. I pull out the Haruko plushie from the bag and set it on the couch before I turn the television on and prepare myself for a much-needed shower. Making news, the body of a young woman has been pulled from a dumpster on Cornell <coughs> Street no more than five feet from the place she worked at. <coughs> Grammatics say she suffered multiple blunt forces to her vital organs, as well as showing signs of stress and struggle. Viewer discretion is advised, as these images contain scenes that may be triggered. All of a sudden, the TV turns into sta- Oh no, that better not be Eleanor. Or maybe it was Shop Girl. Oh no, Olivia! Did Olivia get got? <laughs> oh no, how terrible? All of a sudden, the TV turns into static, and I can only assume that it was caused by the storm. I didn't need to look outside the window to know that it had only gotten worse, and I wonder if Ren was going to be alright on the walk back to his apartment. Also, who was the person on the TV? The reporters seemed to be standing outside of a hardware store, which wasn't far from the pier Ren and I went to today. Man, I really wanted to know more. Despite that, I don't feel like taking any chances with this freak storm, so I quickly race to the bathroom before the power turns off next. With my body finally free from the smell of rain, I let out a satisfied sigh as I slip into the comfort of my bed. I didn't even notice that I had brought my new plushie into the bedroom, but I did bring it close to my side and buried my face in all of its fluffiness. Did I bring it in there? The faintest hint of cherry and mint immense from the toy, and makes my mind drift to thoughts of that strange pink-haired man once more. He was still as odd as usual, but some parts of him were starting to feel rather endearing. I noticed how he was no longer stuttering as much, or acting as shy, and it made me wonder if we were getting closer. Uh, thank him for walking me home. Thanks for walking me home. You didn't have to, but I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. N no problem. I had fun today. It's been a while since I've been to the beach walk anyway. I'm glad I got to go visit it again with you. I even if the weather had to come along and ruin it. <laughs> yeah, I had fun too. 
Well then, much like the first time I met him at the library, I awkwardly gesture to the door behind me as I try and find a way to excuse myself. Sometimes Ren really made these kinds of situations difficult. I should head back inside now, and you should get out of this rain. Oh, yeah, I probably should. He still makes no sign of leaving, which made me wonder if he was waiting to make sure that I made it safely inside my apartment. As if to test that theory, I gave him a small wave and turn on my heel. Oh, before you go, th this is for you. Lean in and kiss his cheek. Mwah. Before I can stop myself, I take a step closer to Ren and gently pull him closer by the front of his cardigan. He seems surprised by my actions, with how wide his eyes get, but it doesn't stop me from leaning upwards and pressing a soft kiss against his cheek. Aww. The smell of cherries and fresh linen lingers when I pull away, and I watch with slight amusement as Ren's cheeks instantly flare a deep scarlet. <laughs> Thanks for walking me home. Uh, uh, uh. Oh no, I broke him! Ren.exe has stopped working! I can almost see the steam rise from his head as he remains in his slouched-over position, so I awkwardly pat his chest to get him to loosen up. I, I mean, yeah, of course, don't mention it. He almost bumps his head with the umbrella as he leans back, but remains close to my side. With a warm and fuzzy feeling still inside me, I climb up the flight of stairs until I reach my floor. Time to go in for the kill! Gimme those lips, Ren! Lean in and kiss him. He seems surprised at my actions, with how wide his eyes get, but it doesn't stop me from leaning upwards and pressing a soft kiss against his lips. Oh. The taste of cherry lingers when I pull away, and I watch with slight amusement as Ren's cheeks instantly flare a deep scarlet. <gasps> Anime noises. Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't cycle through these. Is this Egyptian cotton? Egyptian cotton? What's that? It's kind of in the name, Ren. I don't think my towels come from Egypt. I mean, that's pretty far away, and I can only imagine how expensive the shipping would be. You know what? Never mind. Oh. He actually looked like he was considering the question, and I had to roll my eyes. Ren is all like, Espoir, I will go to Egypt to get cotton for you, whatever that is. Especially at his comment on shipping being expensive. What were shipping costs to him if he could afford a place like this? Don't you have any friends? Well, I, I do. I think. You think? Though, to be fair, I haven't invited any of them to my place yet. But they don't exactly live in Corlin Bay in the first place. Oh, what? What? Nothing. Never mind. Anyways... Am I your first house guest? M maybe. I'm I'm actually very picky with who I invite over, and I prefer to be on my own most of the time. So, I don't usually bring people over. You never answered the question. I give him a teasing smile, and he shyly turns his head away instead. But anyways, if I uh if I don't press the glitchy spend the night. <laughs> I guess I could stay the night, if that's really okay with you. Yeah, of course, it's totally fine. Wow, he really was an energetic, eccentric man, wasn't he? Oh. Oh yeah, I forgot to pick- Forget it, I'm going home, alone. Ren, you took way too long. I honestly thought you left me at this point. Uh-huh, why would I- Look, it doesn't matter. You've already wasted my time, and now I'm all soaked. I'm just gonna head home. Thanks for today, but after waiting for so long, I'm no longer in a good mood. Wait! He grabs onto my wrist again, but this time his grip was much stronger, almost as if he wanted to keep me here. Turning to face him, I barely give him more than a second to explain himself before I decide to walk off. I... I was just... I... You wanted that Haruko plushie from earlier, right? I bought it on the way back. I really didn't think it'd take that long, but... As if to prove a point, he offers me the bag from under his arm. And true to his word, there was the plushie I was eyeing earlier, all wrapped up in a plastic casing to stop it from getting wet. It almost pulled at my heartstrings, 
and I would have found his consideration endearing, like usual. But something about seeing Ren with that cashier from earlier still rubbed me the wrong way. For all I know, he could have been chatting her up while she wrapped the toy. No, it's fine. You can keep it. I just want to go home, okay? So please, let go of my arm, now. As if finally noticing his grip on me, Ren hesitantly lets go of my arm. But not before gently placing the bag into my arms for me to take, and offering me a pitiful smile. Oh, oh, he's so sad. Oh, Really, I was just buying this for you. I'm really sorry it took me so long. I merely offer him one final nod of my head before I turn on my heel. Whether or not he perceived that as me accepting his apology was up to him. You're really going. Wait. He reaches for my sleeve this time, and I feel him give it a faint tug before he lets it go. Almost as if he remembered my words from earlier. Please don't go. Please stay. I, I'll buy you something else. What about your favorite snack? Or do you want another cake? There's a convenience store nearby. O or maybe some manga. We can go to the library instead. Was he seriously putting up that timid act again? After all this time, I don't even bother turning around at this point. Oh, that's so cold, Espoir. Angel, please. Please don't go. I'm sorry. Let me make it up to you. Espoir. His voice gets drowned out by the rain as I hurriedly run back home, using his bag as a makeshift umbrella. Oh, 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 how terrible. Slamming the door shut, I immediately throw the bag in frustration, before picking it back up and ensuring that the contents inside it were still okay. After all, while this poor Haruko plushie didn't deserve such horrid treatment, Ren sure did. Placing it back on the table, I decide to change out of my wet clothes and take a quick shower. There was no use in making things even worse by catching a cold. I could even check to see if Moth was online later and vent to them. God, I really wanted to scream right now. Mm. Once I finished with my shower... Oh! I noticed how the plushie was no longer on the table where I left it. Mm. Strange. Did it fall off? I shuffle around the kitchen island to investigate when the power suddenly turns off. Oh no! Great. Now there's a blackout too, huh? The, 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 the power didn't go out in any of the other endings. In a pathetic attempt to not bump into anything, I fumble around for the cupboard under the sink to try and find some spare matches and candles. Oh no! But as I do so, I barely make out the sound of my front door creaking open. Critical error. Oh. Ren. Ren, don't jump scare me. <laughs> there we go. Don't worry, Espoir. I won't let you get my bad ending. Ending? I'm just gonna jump scare you. So don't hide from me. Why are you hiding from me? I won't hurt you, so don't be scared. Don't you realize that we're meant to be together? I love you, Espoir. I love you so much. What? What, what was that? Did something happen? What? <laughs> Renny Poo. Renny Poo. Cut that out. Oh dear. I tried to see what would happen if, if I was mean to Ren again and he, he has acknowledged that I've gotten his bad ending again. Oh no. Again? Espoir. Why are you doing this? You're not going to find anything here. It's just me. Nothing else exists here. Your ellipses are going crazy, fam! Why don't you just play the game normally? That way, neither of us will have to be stuck in this dark void. Hmm? I love being with you, watching you interact with everything. Everything is so bright and colorful when you're around. Will you let me out? What? Please, let me out. It's no fun here. I want to be with you. I love you. 
I'm I'm getting the feeling that he has some pretty strong feelings for me. What? What? Did you say something, Ren? Sorry. I, I was I, I was turned away for, for no reason. No reason in particular. <laughs> Okay, I, I think that's everything I can do every, like, I mean, nothing major, pretty much the same thing happens. It just depends on whose house you go to at the, uh, at the end. But I think that's everything that I can do for right now in day two. Teo's gonna catch these hands, and Olivia might have already caught some hands. But from that weird last ending, it seems that Ren is trapped somewhere? I... It, it just raises more questions? Well, I will patiently wait to see more of Ren and his shenanigans. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night. And remember, there is always hope.